This past year, I've ridden almost 100 new roller coasters, making my credit count 122. I've gained credits at SeaWorld Orlando, Universal Orlando Resort, Busch Gardens Tampa, Kings Island, Carowinds, Knott's Berry Farm, Six Flags Magic Mountain, and all three of the Fun Spot Parks. I've ridden many great coasters this year, and now I'm going to rank up my top 20 coasters post-2022 season. Number 20, Hang Time at Knott's Berry Farm. America's first Gerslauer Infinity Coaster is a good one. Though it is pretty short and has a little bit of a rattle, it really isn't a big deal because of the comfortable restraints. The short layout packs a punch with five great inversions, though they don't have much hang time. In fact, I'd say this ride has more air time than hang time. Number 19. Montu at Busch Gardens Tampa. While I find this inverted coaster overrated, it is still a great ride and is nowhere near the most overrated ride in the park. The inversions are intense, the ride is fast, the ride is long, the ride is smooth, and overall it is just a fun ride, With but it's really just nothing to write home about. Number 18. White Lightning at Fun Spot Orlando. This is the definition of an underrated wooden roller coaster. From the intense pullout to all the floater airtime, this ride is small but mighty. The first time I rode this on an April morning, I found it alright, but when I rode it again on a cold November evening, I hit the brake run with my jaw dropped. Seven times. If you plan to go to Fun Spot in the morning and can't go in the evening, just, just don't go. It's not worth it. Number 17. Banshee at Kings Island. My favorite inverted coaster is a very good ride overall. Banshee has a solid first drop and seven floaty inversions. And the final roll is full of glorious hang time. The helices are intense, though not as intense as Montu, and the ride is just enjoyable. That is, if the restraints aren't about to fracture your hips. Number 16. Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is probably the scariest coaster I've been on. Facing down almost 200 feet on top of a mountain with nothing but your vest restraint stopping you from falling is a freaky thought. Now, this ride is totally safe and nobody has ever fallen out of a coaster of this style, but the thought is still a little freaky. The ride itself is also pretty good. The first turns are really fun and you really feel like you're flying on top of a mountain, but the ride really gets good in the second half, starting with a slightly overrated but still insane pretzel loop. Then you'll head into a nice slow roll. Although it is a lot like any other roll on a B&M flyer, it is still very fun and it is a nice little inversion, if you want to call it that. Now comes the scariest part of the ride, a turn that, while very slow, still presses you into your restraint while over 120 feet over a waterfall and rocks. I don't really know why it freaked me out, but just being pushed down from that high up in the speed that you're going, and also once you're still contemplating what had just happened previously, it is just a crazy turn, and although you don't go very fast and it's not super intense, I don't know what it was, but it was kind of scary. The ride also throws an airtime pop into the brakes just for good measure. This ride is pure insanity and is worth the entire drive out from LA just for this. Number 15, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Universal's Islands of Adventure. This family thrill coaster is very likely the most popular roller coaster in the world. I've never seen this coaster with less than a 100 minute wait, even when the rest of the rides are just 20 minutes. And while most rides in this scenario have a very low capacity, Hagrid's actually has a very high capacity, so it's just because it's so popular. And rightfully so, it is fun for everybody. This is a coaster that I love, my mom loves, my sister loves, my friends love, and even my grandparents love it. It's just a coaster that everybody loves, and it isn't because of the thrill factor, which I would say is pretty low. It's because of the fun layout and great launches, not to mention the insane theming. Overall, Hagrid's is a long ride that the whole family can enjoy. Number 14, Diamondback at King's Island. This B&M hyper coaster is full of floater airtime. It is fairly boring compared to the other hypers on this list, but it's still a very fun ride, and it is a B&M hyper, so you know it's good. The long trains drag the back of the train over the drop, and the ride is super smooth, at least on the day I rode it. The final camelback gives strong floater, and the helix into the brakes is very intense. Overall, this is a long, fun ride, and it is really good, even though it does have a couple dull parts. Number 13, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot. This ride is just pure fun. From the music playing in the background, to the floater pops thrown into the turns, to the just fun layout, this is a ride that'll make you want to ride it again and again. It's too bad it's Disney, and the lines are just so extreme that you probably won't be able to ride it again, and it's impossible right now because of the virtual queues. But... That's a topic for another video. 
This ride has one of the best pre-shows and stations I've ever seen. The queue itself is also really cool with all the props to look at. Overall, this ride is just really fun with an unmatched ride experience. Number 12, Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. While I have bashed it recently for its fairly uncomfortable ride experience, it is still a very good ride. It is very smooth, though not as smooth as the other RMCs, and it is full of ejector airtime. I also like that you go around twice, but they really need to do something about that lift being slow, even when a train isn't going to come. The first drop is very good, and the twist is actually noticeable, unlike another RMC that I've ridden, and the layout is just very fast-paced and very fun. Just missing the top 10 at number 11 is Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. Now this is a ride that I've ridden many, many times, and it still gets me. The layout is just the best layout in any B&M Hyper, and in fact, it's probably the best layout on any B&M. From the sustained flowjector hills in the beginning, to an insane helix pulling 4 Gs for a solid 7 seconds, to the insane finale of 3 sustained ejector hills, each slamming you into your seat so hard that it almost hurts. I could talk about how amazing this ride is for hours, but I just simply don't have the time. This is a B&M masterpiece, and it's just too bad this ride isn't the smoothest, making it tough to re-ride. Now kicking off the top 10 coasters is Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. This wooden coaster is extremely smooth and is probably one of the best wooden coasters on earth. From being ultra smooth to its insane pacing to the second half with loads of airtime to the crazy sustained laterals, this ride has it all and should be high on anyone's bucket list. The second half is crazy with the sense of speed through the structure and the ride is just super long. This ride is 100% worth the long slow wait you might have to go through to ride it. Number 9, Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. This B&M Hyper is one of the most fun and graceful rides out there. Though the airtime might not be the strongest, it has so much of it it's just crazy. You spend so much time out of your seat and it's not just airtime. In the front row, you'll get some hang time on that first overbank turn. I also find the ending very fun with the whippy turns over the plaza. Though this ride isn't as intense as other Hypers like Goliath, its mix of hang time, airtime, and whip makes it a must ride in Orlando. Number 8, Orion at King's Island. This B&M Giga Coaster is a great ride. The reason why some people don't like it is because it wasn't the Giga they wanted for KI. They wanted Fury, and this is not Fury. This takes Fury and Leviathan and mixes them. So while I'd say they are both better, no, I haven't ridden Le Leviathan, but I do think it would be better, Orion is a great mix of the two. The first drop lasts forever and gives some nice strong floater. The wave term gives some strong lateral airtime, the speed hill is awesome with that airtime and speed mix, and the ending reminds me of Goliath with the light ejector in the beginning, then slamming you back into your seat. This ride also has a pointless helix that does nothing other than making the ride longer, just like Fury. So for anybody that complains, oh, this ride is nothing like Fury at all, there you go. The biggest similarity, right there. Number 7, Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. This is one of those rides that just gets better and better as you go along. It kicks off with an okay first drop and an airtimeless first airtime hill, at least in the back. But then the ride just goes berserk on that drop into the ravine. You are blasted with back-to-back -back floater hills and rapid transitions. Though the ride does cool down for a second for the turnaround, but then you're just back at it again. Back and forth, side to side, up and down. You are just going in every direction until you hit the brake run, aka the shed. There's pretty good theming in there, but I will say it was still a little disappointing. Overall, the ride is non-stop and is definitely worth a trip to Kings Island alone. Number 6, Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain. The most surprising coaster of 2022 is also one of the best. Wonder Woman is an action-packed RMC Raptor full of ejector airtime from start to finish. I went into this ride thinking it would be a fun ride that maybe ended up in my top 15, so you could imagine how baffled I was when it ended up just barely out of my top 5. The first drop is crazy in the back and is one of the best rides I've ever done. The stall is very good and the drop off the mid course is demonic. The finale wasn't the best but it still gives great airtime on the hills and the wave turn is very whippy. Overall this ride is just one of the craziest rides I've ever done and absolutely shocked me. Number 5. Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia Some people may call me biased but I really think Twisted Cyclone is a very underrated ride. From the catapult that is the first drop to the strongest airtime hill I've ever been on, Twisted Cyclone is just one insane ride. This ride is the definition of small but mighty. It has arguably one of the better RMC pre-lifts. It has one of, if not the best first drop I've ever been on. 
and it has a mini version of Iron Gwazi's beloved death roll. It has one of the longest and best wave turns in the world, and it has one of the strongest pops of airtime you'll find on a coaster. Twisted Cyclone holds its speed very well through its short layout and is overall a masterpiece of a coaster. Though Twisted Cyclone is very short, I never feel cheated after hitting the brake run because it is a complete ride. RMC really knocked it out of the park for this one, and I truly think that this is the best 30 seconds you'll ever get on a roller coaster. Number 4. Copperhead Strike at Carowinds Carowinds' latest coaster is a long, well-themed, and overall amazing coaster. The first launch is very good and definitely stronger than I was expecting. All the inversions, except for the corkscrew, give fantastic hang time, and Copperhead has one of the best sets of inversions in the country. Though the twister sections are pretty lackluster, the rest of the ride is filled with airtime, whip, and hang time. Overall, Copperhead Strike is a very long ride that really does come close with the next coaster on this list. Number 3. Fury 325 at Carowinds This B&M Giga Coaster is famous for its speed, and boy does it have speed. Flying through the snappy overbank turns at over 80 miles per hour is a sensation that you can only get on Fury. From its never-ending first drop to its snappy wave turns at high speeds to its ejector airtime finale, Fury really does have it all, not to mention its intimidating appearance in front of Carowinds. Fury 325 is really the definition of a speed demon and it really excels in that category. Number 2. Jurassic World Velocicoaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure this is basically the definition of the perfect roller coaster. It's got theming, it's got strong launches, it's got airtime, it's got hang time, it's got both at the same time, it's long, it's good at pacing, it's got whip, it's literally got everything. The first half is quite slow, but it does have a lot of airtime, and the first inversions are very good. The ride really picks it up after the second launch with the enormous top hat and amazing drop. It doesn't stop there. You go through a zero G stall and a wave turn, then you head up into the best element, the outer bank turn. You just get flinged up and then side to side. It is truly a crazy sensation and totally caught me off guard my first ride. Then the finale, the world-class Mosasaurus roll, one of the greatest inversions of all time. Velocicoaster is truly a high-speed, action-packed masterpiece of a coaster. Number 1. Iron Gwazi at Bush Gardens Tampa Take Twisted Cyclone and double it. Double the height, double the length, double the intensity, double everything. Now you have Iron Gwazi. This ride is pure insanity. It leaves you speechless every time, and I don't understand how it's physically possible for a ride to hold up its speed so well. From the insane whip of the overbank turn to the crazy final airtime hills, Iron Gwazi is one of the craziest, most out of control experiences, and there really is not a coaster in the world that I think could beat it. So that was my top 20 roller coasters. What did you think of the list? Did you agree or disagree? Feel free to nicely tell me your thoughts in the comment section. So with that said, please make sure to like, subscribe, to have a thrilling rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.